thank everyone this morning for their service. Michael Hayes, as always, we appreciate your singing and coming. And one day I'm going to sing just like that. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? I want to thank Mark and Vicki for the tag team effort this morning. We appreciate all of that. You know, um, this morning, as we begin our Adventist service, I want you to take the time to think about this time of year. What's important to you this time of year? I was driving around earlier in, it must have been early, November and someone had Christmas lights up, Christmas trees up, shopping and all these different things. But I didn't hear a whole lot about the good news that we're going to talk about this morning. Didn't see a whole lot about the wonderfulness of our Lord and Savior who is, has finally decided, you know what, I'm going to send you my son to help you to become closer to me. Didn't hear a lot of that. So we are going to prepare ourselves. This is Advent, and it's the process of us preparing ourselves for the greatest birthday ever. There is no better birthday. For believers, for non-believers, for there is always this sense of, oh, you can get your life back in track if you can believe and come to accept. But first thing, this Sunday, we're talking about hope, the beginning of a celebration of a gift that will last longer than any gift we could want or ask for. The people of Israel have for many, many years been told about a savior that would appear to give them a promise of a new life, a purpose, a face they could see and hear that would give them and us direction for our lives. Our first calendar this morning was, says hope. Now, no candle, if you don't light, there's darkness. Make sense? So we're beginning to have an opening of a new light in our lives and a new way of thinking. And that's what I believe we need to kind of focus on. The light of the candle of hope, there is no life. If there's no light, there's no real path. Uh, it's like me getting up in, uh, I don't want to turn the light on, and I'm thinking I'm going to go walk somewhere in my apartment, knowing that I'm not maybe the neatest guy on the planet. You know, I'm not that bad, but maybe not. So I'm going to walk and don't turn the light on. So what will happen, Kenny, when you walk and don't turn the light on? I will stumble. I will step on things that... God only knows what it, what it was. But what we're talking about here, the people of Israel, they had this history of traveling amazing paths from the road out of Egypt, the desert wilderness, from leaders who had their own agendas, being captured by other nations for years. Yes, it's been a journey for them. So now, we had a prophet Isaiah saying at the, in the beginning of this chapter, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that our hard service has been completed, that our sins have been paid for. The Message Bible has another way of saying it, that she has served her sentence, that her sin is taken care of, forgiven, She's been punished enough and more than enough. Now it is over and done with. The first candle, the first glimmer of hope. The lighting of this candle is it, it, the idea, the word hope. I don't, just hope. I don't care how bad you're doing. If you hear hope, there's a possibility that something can change. There's a possibility that wherever you are in your state of life, it can get better. And, and, and so 
the people now have a sense of maybe, maybe something different can happen in my life. Maybe I can move away from where I've been to my thinking, to my beliefs, even though I've heard the word, but something may be different. The prophet Isaiah is talking about something different this time. In our scripture today, Isaiah the prophet, who has the theme of telling what is broken, but also the promise of God's healing. But most important, this was his prediction of the birth of Jesus. And, and our scripture goes on and talks about, and sometimes I wonder, um, at least for me, it might have a different meaning than, than what some others might think. But in the scripture, you hear words, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Each valley shall be raised, every mountain and hill made low, rough ground shall become level, rugged places a plain. I don't think they're really talking about physical roads, physical high. I think they're talking about the human spirit. Think about the human person, that for this to work, all those who live in a high country on the hill, you got to come on down. For those of you who are low and don't think you're worthy, come on up. We are on level grounds in this relationship. We don't have to worry about rough roads anymore. <laughs> All roads will be smooth. That's hope. That's a sense of something special is getting ready to happen for us. But it's not always that easy for us, that's for sure. So now we have this idea that it's possible this darkness can slowly be a glimmer of I'm not sure what's out there. I don't know, it doesn't look like it used to look. Seem like those who are high is with me now and those who are lower are up with me. Seem like we might be going along the same path. I'm not sure. The light of hope will shine bright when we give the praise. When we take the time in good times and bad times to say thank you and we will wait. You gotta wait sometimes. It doesn't happen when I want it to happen. It may not happen when I, I think it's happening. It's not really happening because what I think is happening is what I think. That ain't what God's plan is. So sometimes I just have to wait. A scripture talks about, excuse me. A <clears throat> scripture talks about how people are like grass or flowers of the field. Our prophet is being honest about who we are, the truth be told. When the sun is out, great times. But also, those leaves were, in dark times will wither. They don't have the strength to be on their own. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But we want you to hear this. The word of, the word our God endures forever. Joshua 1.9 says, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And one of my favorites, Romans 15.13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace if you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. What's happening here? We've been asked sometimes, we like flowers and trees, we just wither away. But man, when we hear the word of our God, it's a special earth we're in now. It's a sense that we can be places we never thought we could be. We will hear differently. We will feel differently. And there is a possibility that we will prepare ourselves for this wonderful birthday that is coming. I think Isaiah is saying, listen, you got to tighten up. You've been brought out of the wilderness. You've been brought here. But if you want to experience what's getting ready to happen, some things in you as a person needs to change, needs to improve. Because you have, we have evidence of what you will do. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to know the end and do it anyway. It's, it's something about knowing who I am 
And no matter what I may say out of my mouth, Kenny, you're going to move those boxes that have been there since you moved into this apartment. Those boxes are still there. It's not what I say that, that our prophet is trying to tell us. It's what do you do? It's how are you living your life? And for us, there's only one route. There's only one way. We got to believe and trust that God is worthy. I think Isaiah is preparing us for this coming, but something has to be done to the body that we call the body that is of us, but at times not looking out for our best interest. I wonder if sometimes that we have this hope in the light of it, but sometimes it's like a gift. You know how you get a gift, you look at it, and, and you, you wonder what's in the gift. You think you know because of the size of it. You know, it's big, it'll be a big gift, small, but we don't know what's inside. I think when we talk about our Lord and Savior, we really don't know what this gift really is. So how do we find out what it is? How do we know what it is for us? And I believe for everyone, there's different things that will be yes. For some of us, I'm gonna have to work on it. But one thing for sure, his gift is so special in our lives, but we gotta be ready for it. I gotta be hopeful that what is coming for me will give me the peace that I never have, will give me a sense that my life is something special and, and, and it's, it's this gift that's gonna be wrapped in his Holy Spirit, it's gonna have a ribbon on it that says all will be well, it's gonna be decorated in colors that will give me the idea that I couldn't believe this could happen to me. Hope. What do you hope for here? What is God saying to you? I think as we go through this four weeks, I would encourage you all to regroup, to pause, and look at this holiday season. We all know the manger, we all know the story. But what does the story mean to you deep inside? Sometimes we're very comfortable of knowing the story, the Mary, the wise men, all that good stuff. But man, does that change us any? Does that make us any different? You would think that this wonderful event that's getting ready to happen, that we're gonna have so much to look forward to that we can celebrate. But will we? Will we truly? We'll sing the songs. We'll watch the little Christmas plays. We'll do all of that. But there's an hour when we're by ourselves. It's the hour when we sit with ourselves. And we need to make sure that we're connected to the source. We need to be able to say, you know, God, thank you for bringing me this gift. God, thank you for giving me an opportunity that I know I've been in the wilderness, and we are in the wilderness today on a lot of levels, if we're not careful. Thank you for allowing me to remove all those things that block you from me, that block you from you, rather, that allow me to move places where I don't really need to be, that gives me the idea that I can fix me on some levels. God is waiting for us to acknowledge the gift. That makes sense? He wants us to be able to say thank you, and not just words. I think it's thank you by how we carry ourselves, how we meet one another, how we greet one another, how we take the time to hear his word and read his word. So in that, we can be, not only have the glimmer of hope, but we're gonna get some other stuff. Hope alone won't work, but the light has been shown. Hope is the thing that will move me, that will allow me to say yes, when more often than not, I wanna do it my way. What is your goal? What is it for this holiday season? Let it be special this year. Let it be something different this year. Maybe I wanna just sit, sit with some verses of reading, 
set with some conversation about what my relationship with God is. You need to be able to say something about what your relationship with God is and his son and how that had made your life different if it has and if it has not, why? Do I want to grow? Because I believe we can go back to the dark days if we choose to. I believe we can have the journey of the wilderness one more time. I believe we can have the sense of believing that I don't know, but I'm going to go going my own way. God is offering us a salvation, a new way of thinking, a new way of living. And what we need to do and what we should be wanting to do is now that we have been told about God can do anything, his word is true. Let us embrace that. Let that be something that holds me up. To see what's going to happen is this holiday season, if I'm not careful, I will be consumed. I'll be consumed with pleasing people. I'll be consumed with, oh man, I got to get this gift. I got to get this Christmas list. Christmas list. Well, mine is very small. Me. That's terrible, I'm sorry. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that don't let the list be what Christmas is about. Don't let all these other things, what it's going to be about. What it's going to be about is a loving, caring God. May God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't let, this, don't let this time go by. Don't let it just be just another Christmas. Can we make it a special Christmas this year? Can we do, just make it a special Christmas? Maybe something you've never done before. Maybe something you've done years ago. But make it special. Because you know what? No guarantee we're going to see another one like this. I don't guarantee it. And what's more important, when is there ever a better time to turn my will and my life over to a God that loves me just unconditionally and has given his only son for us. That's the good news. That's the good news. And these next four weeks, we're going to look at other areas of, of Advent that all together, we're going to have a light that is going to be so bright in our lives. All of these candles are going to be lit. And it's just going to be brightness. Because what we're going to see is the glory of God, how he loves us, un just loves us, and want nothing but the best for us. And all he asks is that you acknowledge and say that I'm willing to walk with you. Didn't ask us to be perfect, but it's given us hope that we can move from hope to willingness to an unremitting declaration that God I love you and I want to serve you to the best of my ability not one day not for one month but for the lifetime that I have here can you imagine what our lives could be but I'm telling you we live in a world today you might want to get on board you might want to re, re look at all those things that you think important and let the life of God be in our lives there's a prayer that I wanted to, I found our Adventist prayer. just want to read it in our, in our closing. And, and, um, this Advent, Lord, come to the manger of my heart. Fill me with your presence from the very start. As I prepare for the holidays and gifts to be given, Remind me of the gift you gave when you sent your son from heaven. This, the first Christmas gift, it was the greatest gift ever. You came as a baby born in a manger, wrapped like the gifts I found under my tree, waiting to be open to reveal your love to me. Restore to me the wonder that came with Jesus' birth. When he left the riches of heaven, and wrapped himself in rags of earth. 
Amen. God loves us so much. Let us just wrap ourselves in him this holiday season. And we can, and you know what you don't, these ain't like wraps you put on gifts. <laughs> you know what you do with the wraps after you open them up. Oh, no. What you're going to wrap yourself now is something that will carry you through it all. It's the wraps of love. It's the wraps of caring. It's the wraps of knowing that I'm not alone. It's the wraps of knowing that this is what I'm here for. This is what I believe, and this is what I want. Amen.